friends, welcome to today's video. I'm going to be painting today, if you can believe that. Uh, I'm using my Moleskine Japanese album, which I got for Christmas. Now, this is a very, very bizarre little art journal, let me say that much. It is basically a long, 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 long piece of paper that's been accordion folded into the journal. It's only really attached at the front. You can pull out this entire sheet and, uh, and it's basically like a massive brochure. So I thought it was pretty interesting. It's a little gimmicky, but uh, I wanted to pick it up and give it a go. Uh, I'm using three pages today. I'm not gonna do anything too ultra, but uh, just a nice little panoramic spread for me to paint because I rarely paint from start to finish. So uh, I'm using my gouache today, my Holbein Acrylic Gouache. These are little Japanese tubes. There's uh, 12 colors in there. These are a hybrid gouache. They're more like acrylic paint meets gouache watercolor. So uh, I'm going to talk a bit about why that's a little different later. I also picked up this Pentel watercolor white which I uh, purchased in Japan last year to use to mix some of my pastel colors. I'll talk about why that was an issue later. And then I picked up the Kuretake gold pan uh, watercolor because I thought I was going to add little gold accents, which I didn't. So waste of time even talking about that. Uh, it is a rare day in history when I paint from start to finish, like paint an entire piece. I am not as proficient at painting as I am drawing. I love to illustrate, I love pens, pencils, markers, uh, those just feel comfortable for me. I'm, I'm used to that, I practice with that the most. Um, painting is its own little beast and I find it difficult to get in the mood to paint, uh, mostly because there's a lot of setup involved and it's a bit messy. Uh, but also, uh, the process of painting is different to drawing for me because it takes a lot longer. It's slower. You have to wait for things to dry or dry them with your heat tool. You have to work a bit more methodically and in layers and steps. Uh, with pencils and markers and, you know, all that kind of stuff, I, I feel like it's just much easier for me to work. And, uh, and I do things a lot quicker. Which doesn't necessarily make it better, uh, but it's just more convenient for someone like me that has, you know, obsessive creating disorder. I've got, like... Creative schizophrenia. It's, I've got about 20 minutes to do something and then I'm over it. Um, so sitting down to really commit to a painting for a couple of hours uh, is is daunting for me. Uh, but, you know, nevertheless, I gave it a go. So I'm really happy that I did. I, uh, I set out to learn just uh, if I still enjoyed this gouache from what I remembered and, uh, and if I could figure out how to make it work in the way that I wanted to make it work. And, uh, and just, yeah, I wanted to practice my brush skills, I guess, painting. Just get a feel for painting again because I just I don't often do it and I think it is uh, you know something that I should be practicing I should be doing it uh, because I should be pushing myself outside of my comfort zone a little bit just because I should <laughs> everyone else does so I have to as, as well right um, <coughs> pardon me that flu is is literally holding on for dear life but um, I'm all better it's just that stupid cough now I've also got someone outside cutting down trees. So that's fun. That chainsaw isn't me. It's the guy outside. Um, look, the gouache is interesting. I want to talk about gouache for a second because I feel like a lot of people give gouache a bad rap and I don't really understand why. Um, it can be a little tricky to use, but to be honest, anything that you're using for the first time can be a little tricky. You know, the first time you used watercolor, you were probably like a little intimidated with how it worked and how much water to add and how to get a certain effect. And, uh, you know, the first time you picked up a, a pocket brush pen, like an ink brush pen, uh, you know, you found that it, it's, it's super difficult to control the brush and you didn't really know what effects it was going to give you and you didn't know how to use it yet. Um, but as with anything, the more you use it, the more comfortable you get with it. And, uh, and I'm all for teaching yourself and faking it till you make it. There are a ton of people out there that give great tutorials and uh, lessons on how to do things properly and how to do things very specifically. But for me, art and, and journaling and mixed media art and all that kind of stuff is just, is supposed to be so intuitive. I don't know, uh, I don't know how much joy I personally could get out of, you know, working in the ideas and principles of all the foundations. I get that you're supposed to understand foundations. Believe me, when I danced, there was no way I could get, you know, a professional job dancing if I didn't have all the foundations of dance right. But there comes a time when you kind of just have to uh, trust that you've got all that knowledge, you've got all that foundation, and then just go and do what you need to go and do. 
uh, and that's where your creative expression comes out and that's where you start finding that uh, you know you have your own unique voice you have your own uh, certain way of doing things that that particular other people might find difficult other people might find crazy or other not people might be inspired to try uh, because at the end of the day we're all gonna do it differently and I just think uh, you know people give gouache a bit of a bad rap because it can be a little tricky to use when you start but I just want to remind you that everything is everything is tricky when you first start so if gouache is something you're looking at uh, and you've got in your your tool belt you've got in your little craft arsenal but you haven't really pulled it out I just want to encourage you to pull it out and think of it as a matte acrylic paint um, because it basically is this the ones I'm using are very um, unusual in that they're like a hybrid so they're like an acrylic paint meets a gouache. Uh, they've got this acrylic polymer in it, which basically means that uh, when it dries down, it's waterproof. So when you, if you like splash some water on this, it's, it's not going to react. You're not going to be able to pick up that color like you might be able to with a watercolor. Um, it's basically, you know, locked on the page. Um, and also uh, to note, if you're mixing colors, if it dries on the palette, you're not going to be able to re-wet it and you're not going to be able to pick that color back up much like an acrylic paint once it's dry gone just becomes plastic so um these are like a hybrid like that i believe there are other gouaches out there that don't have that uh that acrylic um polymer in them uh, i feel like most real gouache doesn't have that in it and it can be re-wet and you can put it on your palette and re-wet it on your palette um it's it's drying time is a, a bit longer um because this gouache does dry down pretty quickly um but at the end of the day those are all um those i, I don't think those are things that would stop me from using it uh to be honest i just don't paint a lot <laughs> but i do like gouache i do I do really like it. I think I like it most for how flat and opaque it is. Like it's very matte and opaque. It's kind of the ultimate matte opaque paint to me. Um, and as mixed media artists, we're always kind of looking for that ultimate matte opaque paint because uh, it's super easy to work on top of with our other mediums. So for me, I think uh, I, I would love to try this again and get more mixed media on it and see just how well my pencils and inks and markers and everything work on top of the of, of this paint because it is very very flat um, and matte I have used other matte acrylic paints before and uh, as with every brand it's kind of hit and miss whether you like it or not I've used other matte acrylic paints that honestly if I layer them too much it start to become glossy which I think is a really interesting uh, a really interesting feature of a matte acrylic paint but you know it's all chemicals when it comes down to it so you never really know until you play with it the like the way you like to play with it that's why I don't want to encourage anyone to go buy something just because you've seen me use it and I want to encourage you to um, you know take my recommendation for something unless I'm just loving something and I want you to try it but uh, for the most part we're all going to use these things differently and we all have a different idea of what we want to get out of them so unless you've got like unless your head is completely aligned with mine uh, I, f I feel like I don't want to set you up for disappointment if you get it and you're like well I didn't really need that like I didn't want that so uh, I'm not telling you to go out and buy gouache um, or buy this specific brand of gouache. I, um, I've had this for a couple of years and honestly I just felt guilty that I wasn't using it and I noticed that I don't ever really paint anything from start to finish so I thought you know what time to challenge myself a little bit um, New Year same me but <laughs> I just wanted to challenge myself to see if I could fall in love with it and I do really 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 love the effect of it it kind of it reminds me of animation cell shading like it's just super flat um, it's just, it's, I think it's really beautiful, but it makes me feel like I'm creating in a different way. Like, I really have to think about the process of how I do the things that I'm doing. That's why I kept their faces pretty simple, because I, I knew the more that I, the more that I would add, the more away the painting could get away from, you know, the painting could get away from me easier. And, uh, and I just wanted to make sure that I was only, uh, you know, adding certain elements at a time figuring out, uh, you know, when to stop and when to keep it done. I chose a pastel palette, which was super bizarre for me because, you, you know, I'm like hardcore rainbows, bright, bright colors. So uh, using this pastel palette was different, but I actually kind of enjoyed it. I think I really, really liked it. Um, I was thinking about, do you know the pastel houses in um, Edward Scissorhands? I was talking about that the other day, about that aesthetic. And so I think that's why I chose to do this in pastel today. <coughs> Pardon me. 
Um, and yeah, and I just wanted to practice my painting as well because, you know, it's, it's not often that I paint. So uh, I noticed that sitting down for a couple of hours and, and just, you know, painting, the more I went on, the more confident I became with my brush strokes. I would just do it in, you know, a one and done brush stroke or, uh, you know, I wouldn't fuss about and labor over something tiny. I would just let it be. I, um, I found out that I was a bit more confident mixing colors because that's something I don't really do either. When I'm using a lot of watercolor, um, and I'll just, I'll make this, I'll make this distinction. Watercolor for me is painting in a different way because I do it so loose that I don't find it stressful as I do painting something that's very precise or, you know, has a certain shape or, a, you know what I mean? So uh, that's why I consider like watercolor painting more uh, one of those things that I feel proficient with, like drawing and illustration. Um, but I'm talking like specifically like painting, painting, like an acrylic painting from start to finish. Um, you know, that's something that I feel like is a little intimidating for me. Uh, also, I wanted to talk about the, the Pentel White that I used. I was just trying to save my acrylic, uh, my, sorry, my gouache. I was trying to save my white gouache because I'm running out of black and white. Um, they're usually the first colors that seem to go in every set of anything. So I, um, I was trying to save that and be conservative. So I thought, well, this is a hybrid, you know, a gouache is like kind of like a watercolor acrylic you know, hybrid things. So if I mix the white watercolor paint with it, then I can get my pastel color and I won't have to use the white gouache. The, uh, the problem with that is that gouache is very, very pigmented and opaque and watercolor is transparent. Even white watercolor is transparent. So I was kind of making the gouache more transparent. I was like compromising the structure of the paint. So essentially I, uh, I made it less opaque, which just defeated the purpose of using gouache in the first place. And, uh, and it just became a bit streaky. So I could build it up to an opaque layer, but it, it did become a bit streaky. Uh, one other thing to note about gouache, if you're mixing colors, uh, light colors will dry down a few shades darker, dark colors will dry down a few shades lighter, which can be really, really difficult if you're trying to uh, color match. So I would suggest to you mix enough paint to paint all the color areas that you need to paint in that color. And, um, and if you need to go back, uh, good luck to you trying to <laughs> rematch that color. You could always buy a convenience mix paint so that you've got the exact same color every single time, but trying to color match with gouache is, I mean, even acrylic is just kind of near impossible once it's dried down because the shades are so hard to match. Anyway, I'm going to show you some of the close-ups. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you pull out your gouache. Don't go and buy it if, you're, if you don't need it, uh, but if you've got it and you want to try it, I'd love to see what you do with it. Thanks for watching. Bye.